And just have the spirit of non-attachment as you do. Have the spirit of non-attachment. Non-attachment is letting go. Again, when you want something and you are fine, you get it or not. Again, when you want something and you are fine if you get it or not, then you are most likely going to receive it. You must let go of your attachment to success to attract success. Now, go to the light. Letting go doesn't mean giving up. When I went to Italy in 2004, I visited many people in places from Michelangelo's tomb to Florence to the Pope and Vatican. I found Italy is to be the country of rich and ancient history, but poor in current prosperity. It meant some snooty people and some warm ones. Sister Mary Elizabeth is one of the warm ones. She's the personal secretary of the Mother General of the Sisters of St. Philippine Order, from which serves very poor women and children in the third world countries. This is one of my email lists and a fan of my books. She once told me of my ideas and expressed in the e-books, hypnotic writing and hypnotic marketing helped her raise funds to feed homeless and starving children around the world. It was the very best gratifying thing to hear, to be sure. But odd things happen to happen. While in Rome, I checked my email. I was stunned to see emails from my sound engineer telling the master audio tapes of programs I've invested thousands of dollars to create had vanished. It had no explanation. He ran out of the best studios in the world and lost the masters, and here I am, on the other side of the planet, unable to do a thing about it. I couldn't believe it. The thing's not going to get stranger. We hired a driver in Italy to take the Prompelli of Naples. And in the great day, but in the end of the day, while unloading the car, he suddenly told me that he wanted more money than we agreed on. And it made the entire day feel ugly. Later that night, we went to eat. And it was our last evening in Rome. And we had a nice dinner, but then we went to pay. When we were told that we were unfriendly French waitress speaking only Italian, that we were credit card machine was down... Well, we had no cash, and we ended up leaving, promising to send them money for our meal. We got back to the States safely, but the strange world seemed to stay with us. I was told I owe thousands of dollars back on taxes on property I owe. My agent was supposed to negotiate a deal with the publisher and ended up getting fired over it. We decided to go to Las Vegas and see some shows to relax. But on the flight there, I had chest pains and couldn't breathe very well. I thought I was having a heart attack and landed safely. The chest pain stayed with me. The next day, the house doctor at Venetian Hotel took one look at me and sent me to the emergency room. I had never been in the hospital before, so this was scary. And this was my chest pains. I thought I was going to get, never going to go home again. Several hours later, I had a $5,000 lighter. And $5,000 lighter, I was told I had asthma. We returned to home with the strangest continuing, and the strangeness continued. One day, I was typing in a chapter of this very book, entirely sentence repeated on itself on my screen. I was typing a chapter in this very book, an entire sentence repeated itself on my screen. At first, I thought, imagine, I imagined it, and I deleted the sentence. But as I watched the screen, the sentence retyped itself on my screen. Talk about bizarre. As I assumed I had a virus and shook my head, what in the world is happening here? The truth. One day I drove out of town and spent the day with my chiropractor and dear friend, Dr. Rick Barrett, author of several books, including Healed by Morning. I needed a chill to relax, to get some distance. I told him about these misadventures, and I was feeling stressed to the max, and I relayed all of what I just shared with you. I added, I feel like I picked up a curse in Italy. Nothing has been right since. Rick looked at me and said, well, maybe this is all ties in, huh? Maybe you're being attached to the dark forces, he explained, and went to Rome and the Vatican and saw the Pope from which these holy things are focused in the writings of your new book, from which could really change the world. Yes, yes. Well, maybe you're moving to the right light of causing the dark to try to stop you. I'm not sure if I follow. Whenever you go to Mexico to do your mission work, something bad happens, he explained. Me and my wife or other doctors or other volunteers are planning to go to some truly impoverished areas and donate our time, medicine, and practice to help people there. It's a good cause, and yet every time we plan it, something happens. Happens. One time I fell off a ladder one week before going. Another time a woman was denied entry into Mexico because her papers weren't in order. It just seems like when you go to the light, sometimes the dark comes after you. So don't worry about fighting the light. Just go to the light. Even if dark comes after you, it didn't agree to this assessment at first. But from the attractor factor viewpoint, I'd say that the part of this was showing its ugly head. When I fell off the ladder, it was part of him that resisted the good another part of him wanted to do. He attracted the experience. It's the same with me. As I grew closer to completing my book, I almost sabotaged my own efforts to making it a success. No evil force was out to get me. It was simply a part of me revisiting my intentions. Dr. Valerie Hunt, writing in her book Infinite Mind, put it this way, To acknowledge diabiological ent and to acknowledge diabiological entitles that possess power in and of themselves without the person's participation, I believe is inaccurate and destructive. To acknowledge diabi diabolical entitles To acknowledge diabolical entities to acknowledge diabolical entities that possess power in and of themselves without the person's participation, I believe, is inaccurate and destructive, she adds. It ensures protection from the uncovering one's unfinished business because one is looking in the wrong place. In short, I had to get clear. I had to find my way apart from what's resisting and I wanted to actually attract. What I was resisting and from which I wanted to attract, I did that too. 
or else would not, I would not be reading or finishing this book. But back in the conversation with Dr. Barrett, how do we reinforce ourselves to the light and so that the light wins? I asked. Well, you have to tell yourself nothing will stop you, that you won't give up, and that you won't give in, Rick answered. Sometimes you just have to turn it over to God and the universe says, I don't see that way. Well, there is a secret. You maintain your overall goal and you move towards it, always being sensitive in something better, as far as better being offered. And you are not attacked and you are not attached to the outcome either. Just constantly maintain your overall goal and move towards it. And the ultimate secret is aging. Again, the ultimate secret is attracting whatever you want to what it without needing it. To attracting whatever you want is to want it without needing it. When you are detached to the outcome, you disconnect from everything that could sabotage your success. The attractive factor kicks into overdrive, and when your intentions are, you're happy whether or not you're achieving it or not. This is the delicate balance from which the major secret of how the universe works. In other words, in the world of everyday reality, struggling to achieve something causes the opposite forces within yourself to kick into play. From when you come to an inner place in serenity, you go into the flow of towards your wishes, and you have upped your odds of achieving them. Your peace will attract peace. As Deepak Chopra wrote in his book, The Spontaneous Fulfillment of Desire, intention is not simply a whim. It requires attention, and it also requires detachment. Once you create the intention mindfully, you must be able to detach from the outcome and let the universe handle the details fulfillment. In short, you fully activate the attractor factor when you let go. Miracle mindness means behaving like someone who is fearless, well-intentioned, innocent, and ultimately invulnerable. She or he listens within, in, within a guidance that follows any and all impulses towards loving and constructive action. However bizarre and inappropriate they may appear to the ego. Carolyn Miller, Creating Miracles, Understanding the Experience of Divine Intervention. The Million Dollar Secret Formula. What's the hardest part of creating a life that you want and want it? What's the hardest part of creating a life the way you want it? A friend asked me over lunch. I thought for a moment and replied, learning to stop figuring out how you will get what you want. My friend looked confused. She asked, well, what do you mean? Well, if you try to figure out how you will get that new car or your new house or your new relationship, you'll limit yourself or whatever your ego can do as, as well and do. I explained, turn your goal over to the unconscious, which is connected to the spirit of everything and everyone, and let it bring the goal to you and you to your goal. Just follow your inner promptings and act on the opportunities that come your way and you'll get there. Well, I'm not sure if my friend understood what I was saying, but a few days later I was sitting in a limousine being driven by the to have dinner with eight wealthy, wonderful, self-made people. All people started with nothing, and many of them started as I had, in empty pockets and hope with their hearts. And now as I sat in the limo, part of me, I couldn't believe I was there. Now, how did I get there? Remember, thinking to myself, am I, I'm in a beautiful limo with beautiful people beside me, going to a beautiful dinner on some other beautiful person is going to pay for. And I'm just nobody, I'm just a nobody kid from Ohio who left home to find fame and fortune. I used to dig ditches, drive trucks, work in dirt in the rain, and heat over never enough money to pay my bills. And how did I get in this limo? As I thought about it, I knew the secret was a five-step formula I revealed to you in this book. It's the attractor factor, my attractor factor. In short, the secret of increasing my business, finding my love, achieving my better health, and manifesting whatever it is that I want is number one. Know what you don't want. Number two, select what you do want. Number three, clear all negative and limiting beliefs. Number four, feel what it would be like to have, do, or be what you want. Number five, let go and act on your intuitive impulses and allow the results to manifest. Know what you want. Know what you don't want. Select what you do want. Clear all negative and limiting beliefs. Feel what you would Feel what it would like to be, have, or do what you want. Feel what it would be like to have, do, or be what you want. And then let go and act on your intuitive impulses and allow the results to manifest. Yes, that's it. Truth is, there's no way to achieve anything in this world. Truth is, there's no one way to achieve anything in this world. Some people get new cars by winning them. Others struggle to pay for them. Others by happily paying for them. Others by other means. What I told my friend at lunch is the truth. You can't orchestrate the world to... Do your biddings. Instead, you state your intentions and let the world arrange itself to bring your goals to you. In other words, you don't manufacture your outcomes. You participate in them. And you participate in the best ways when it allows you to your inner spirit to do the most of your work. I was also in that limo because I didn't plan to be in it. I allowed, acted, trusted, and accepted. I allowed, acted, trusted, and accepted. I followed the five-step formula. I activated the attractor factor. And when the limo pulled up, I got in. Six key points before we were at the end of this book. Let's go over some of the final key points in the attractor factor process. Six key points. Number one, you're totally responsible for your experiences in your life. 
that doesn't mean that you're caused by them, but when some level attracted them, but your responsibility for them, and that's not good or bad, simply use the experiences to learn about yourself. Get clear and choose what you prefer to experience. Number two, you are absorbing beliefs from the culture itself. You are absorbing beliefs from the culture itself. If you're watching movies, violence, reading papers, watching news, fulfilling your mind, the very vibe of that will attract more of what you soaked up. Mother Teresa said that she would never attend any anti-war rallies. Why? Because it contains the very energy that creates war. Watch from what you absorb. Choose from what you want to attract and be aware. You are not a ruler of this earth, but you have more power than you have ever realized. Number three, you are not a ruler of this earth, but you have more power than you realize. You can move mountains with your right thoughts and action. Keep a balance of ego, spirit in your life, and always striving to let your ego obey the spirit. Number four, you could change your thoughts. You could change your thoughts. This often feels impossible to believe because it's not normal from the vast majority of people. But what you think is largely habit. Start noticing what goes throughout your head. Now, if you don't like it, start consciously changing it, choosing new thoughts. Number five, you can do the impossible. You can do the impossible. What you believe to be restraints of time and space right now may simply be limits of your current understanding. No one knows what is impossible. If you have an inclination to try something new or different, so be it. Go for it. Make it so. You have been creating a path never seen before. Dare something worthy. Number six. Whatever image you add feeling to will manifest. Number six. Whatever image you add feeling to will manifest. So, if you fear something or love something, you are adding energy to it. So don't fear anything. Love everything. Anything you fear or love will tend to be attracted into your life. Choose your passions wisely. And when your limo pulls up, finally, I can't find any better way of ending this book than with this quote from Francis Laramar Warner, written in 1907. When I was interviewed in the late night talk show one evening, I was asked, they asked me to read this quote to them twice. Then they were silent for a moment while the meaning of these words hit home. I'll end this book with the same words and wish you God's speed. And wish you God's speed. God's speed in making all your dreams come true. And when your limo pulls up, get in at God's speed. If we plant a seed in the ground, we know that the sun will shine and the rain will water. If we leave it to the law to you bringing results. We leave it to the law to bring results. Well, the desire you image is the seed. Is the desire the desire you image is the seed. Your occasional closing of the eyes is the imagery is the sun. Your constant though not anxious expectation is the rain and cultivation necessarily to bring absolutely sure results. Francis Lamar Warner, Our Invisible Supply, Part One, nineteen oh seven. If we plant a seed in the ground, we know that the sun will shine and the rain will water. But if we leave it to the law, it'll bring results. Well, the desire you image is the seed. Your occasional closing of the eyes is the imagery is the sun. Your constant thought is not anxious now. Expectation is the rain. Cultivation necessary to bring the absolute. Co expectation is the rain. And the cultivation necessary to bring absolutely sure results. The shocking true story of Jonathan. Nearly every day. I get a call, an email, or a letter from someone asking, What happened to Jonathan? Every person asking this question marveled at the story of my miraculous, even shocking story and work with Jonathan Jacobs, not his real name, and now wants to meet the man himself. This thing is Jonathan, no longer available, I'll tell you why. But you've had a better brace yourself. This was not an easy to read, but Jonathan clearly made a difference in my life. He was my miraculous coach and best friend for more than 10 years. The stories you read in this book are all true. Jonathan was a true helper in co-creating miracles for me and for lots of other people. But Jonathan was also human. Along the way, he started in his ego to take control of his success, and I noticed things at first. In conversation, he appeared more smug. He wanted attention on himself, and he talked about his work more than people wanted to hear. And I let it slide because I was too involved in enjoying the results I was getting from my work with him. But it got worse, and he started to have intimate relations with a few of his female clients. And one of the points was working in a clinic doing and healing work. He was fired for inappropriate conduct due to his clients, with his clients. And I supported him during that dark phase of his life because he was my friend. And, but it didn't stop there. Jonathan lost his father and went into a depression. He considered suicide. In his lifeline, I did the best to help him. I went and stayed with him and counseled him. In the very healings of my methods, I learned from him to help him. After a few months, Jonathan came around, moved back into his life, and started to see clients again. But he was still stuck in his self. 